Well, good morning. It's the Triads, Rock 92, Chase Myers, and they have played over 2,000 shows, performed for over 16 million fans, and have sold over 12 million albums and DVDs. The Trans-Siberian Orchestra, glad to have uh, drummer and founding member Jeff Plate on the line. Good morning, Jeff. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Now, we're looking forward to having you back in Greensboro. You guys are always around during the Christmas season. The show's coming up at the Greensboro Coliseum on December 11th, 730 showtime. Tickets actually on sale today, Friday. September 13th. You can get all the details and uh, buy your tickets at rock92.com. We're just really looking forward to having you guys back here. Well, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's very rewarding. And, and to think that when we started this thing out back in 1996, which was the first, you know, that was the year we released Christmas Eve and Other Stories, which is our first CD. You know, we really had no idea what the future was going to hold for us. But, mm-hmm. but to think that here in 2019, you know, all the numbers that you just said, you know, all the shows that we've done and, and everything that's happened over that course of time, it's it's really kind of mind-blowing to think that this is this has become a reality. But, <laughs> hey, we're very proud, you know, and we look forward to these tours, and we can't wait to get back to Greensboro. Awesome. Hopefully the weather holds out for us this year. That was kind of a freak of nature last time, but, uh, you know, we're always, looking, we're always looking forward to getting back down there. Yeah, we've been putting in some good words with the man upstairs to get you guys back here this year. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so I've been looking forward to talking to you. One reason specifically is because... I'm a drummer myself, and you know I just got to know how you got into music. Was that something that was always in the forefront of your mind? Did you read music? Did you just kind of pick it up by ear? How did you get started? You know, when I was a kid, my my parents loved music. They loved country music. You know, my dad was always listening to to, to music. My mother dabbled in guitar and piano, and you know I was always encouraged to to pick something up. Just being an athletic kid, drums was the first you know obvious choice. But I, I remember being a kid and, and seeing the band. Chicago on television. Oh yeah, and that really lit my fire. I was, I think, I was 12 years old, and for some reason, that music and that band really, like I said, it just got into me. And it was, I think, the following year that I, I convinced my parents to let me stay up late and watch the Midnight Special, and mm-hmm. I saw Kiss, and that was it. As soon as I saw that performance, I knew exactly what I was going to do. I was going to be a drummer. I was going to play in a rock band, and that was my goal. But you know, as I as I grew up and you know, in my teen years, I, I took lessons from a private guy here at home, which really helped me develop. You know, I, I learned how to read. I learned some theory. I learned, you know, so much about being a drummer. And then a lot of it was just, you know, getting out there in the clubs and playing. So you never stop learning and, and you will never, ever learn everything. So to this day, I, I try to stay up on my practice. I try to you know, I look around me and see what the other drummers doing. Uh, you steal a little bit here from there from people. You take some advice. But it has been an interesting journey. And to think of, uh, you know, I can still remember seeing Kiss on television and thinking, wow, I want to be I want to be a part of that. I want to do something <laughs> like that. And, and to think that all these years later that the Trans-Siberian Orchestra has become one of those shows that you dreamed of doing when you were a kid. And I've been part of it from the beginning. It's... It's really something else, but it's something I'm very proud of. Yeah, and you know, the music industry is not something, even though it does have its glamorous fronts, it's not something that you just say, hey, I want to do this, and it just happens. It's a lot of long hours, it's a lot of work, and you kind of have to be at the right place at the right time and make it happen for yourself. Yes, you have to sometimes make your own luck, and there, there is no truer industry where the saying, you know, is who you know, plays into succeeding. And, you know, just throughout my just throughout my years of playing, you know, I tried to uh, tried to sh- show myself as a as a pro and a good good person to work with, and so on and so forth. And it's it's opened some doors for me. But but to your point, when you uh, when you get the opportunity, you have to be ready for it. Yeah. And when I got the call to join the band Sabotage in 1994, I I was ready. You know, I got in there, and you know, thanks to Paul O'Neill and John Oliva for bringing me into their world, but. You know, it didn't stop there. You just have to keep working and getting better. And, you know, I, I've stayed there. I've worked for for these guys ever since. And it's just been awesome. Well, you know, I thought it was interesting. You just mentioned Sabotage. And there was actually a Sabotage song, Chance, that you guys added to the set list last year. So can fans expect any more Sabotage songs or maybe that song on the set list again? Well, I'm not exactly sure. So, so this year... 2019 is our 21st year of touring. We are going to be bringing out the Christmas Eve and Other Stories story, which was, you know, the first CD that we released in 1996. That was the title. And when we started touring in 99, this was the first story that we presented live. It is 
the fan favorite. It is the one that really, you know, hit the mark with all these people across the country and and really opened the door for TSO becoming what it is today. I, I think Paul O'Neill just struck gold when he wrote this story and had this concept and you know, him and his songwriters, John Oliva and Bob Kinkle, put together a brilliant record. So we are going to go back to that that first story, along with all the new production and everything that, we, that we've, you know, developed over the years. So this is going to be quite exciting. But, you know, here again, having, having done all these shows and you try to keep it fresh, you try to add something new. It was interesting last year that Paul's daughter decided to bring chance into the show Mm -hmm. because the handful of rain record which chance is a a song on that was really paul's first you know endeavor into counterpoint vocals and that song is tso you hear all the elements of tso in that song you can kind of tell that this was in paul's mind for a number of years before tso became a reality yeah and we were thrilled to play that song live and honestly this year i'm not sure i'm not sure if we're going to do that song or not but I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't something from the past that we that we put in the show. Yeah, a handful of rain. Like if you were to look up the textbook definition of Trans Siberian Orchestra, it's all encompassed in in that record. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And you know, to that point, even even some other songs from the Gutter Ballet record, from the Streets record, Wake of Magellan, Dead Winter Dead. You know, this Paul had this this idea in his head for a long time, and this style of writing just rolled right into the Trans Siberian Orchestra product that we have and and the style when you hear tso you know it's tso so paul o'neill's you know writing and his style is all over that so what do you do when you're away from the tour life are you guys always into christmas music or, or how do you fill your time uh between those gaps well for the first month i generally do nothing like when i get back home from the tour <laughs> in january it's it's time to rest but for me personally you know i i teach i teach drums at home I have an original project I've been working on. I have a cover band that I've been putting together with some friends of mine. You know, just something I, I keep myself busy musically all year round. Yeah. So, you know, with Trans-Siberian Orchestra, we we lost Paul O'Neill a couple of years ago. Right. And being the, the creator and the founder and the everything that is TSO is certainly, you know, threw a wrinkle into things. So it's, it's taken a little while to kind of get back on track, get things settled. Paul's family is is behind us 100%. They love Paul, what he's what he's created, and it's only right that we that we continue this. Yeah. So, in the meantime, you know, as I'm doing other things at home, there there's been a lot of a lot of talk. There's been a lot of music and a lot of projects that Paul has started over the years, and hopefully we can pick one of these up and finish it one of these one of these years. But uh, you know, in the meantime, the main focus is our is our Christmas tour. This has become such a success and such an important thing for so many people myself my band members and in the crew but you know for the audience i I think that this this group and this music has really just become important to so many people so our main focus is the winter tour but like i said there's there's always some other material that's that's either been worked on waiting to be finished or you know is yet to be created so we'll keep our fingers crossed yeah you mentioned just how important it is not only for you guys but also the audience and i've always been amazed at the fact how it doesn't matter uh, what genre of music you normally listen to or what walk of life you come from the tso show is for everybody it appeals to the masses and that's just it it's a show for everybody you know whether you no matter what style of music you're a fan of there's something in the show for you the production is amazing I mean, you cannot watch a TSO show without going, wow, that's no, no. really cool. And maybe, you know, maybe we're not your cup of tea, but I tell you what, we do what we do very well. The management team around us is excellent. The production team is excellent. Everybody does their job, you know, to perfection. And, you know, here again, we wouldn't be doing this for 21 years if, if something good wasn't going on. And you think we'll get another Christmas album from TSO anytime soon? I think anything is possible. Yeah. Um, you know, I know Paul had a few things in the works before before he passed away. You know, the Christmas thing is, is something that when, once we finished the trilogy and then we did uh, Dreams of Fireflies, I think Paul really wanted to to venture into other things. You know, we we did Beethoven, we did Night Castle. I think Paul at the time was kind of thinking more in those terms. But, you know, you can't deny that the holiday theme that, that TSO represents and, and everything that we've been able to achieve with that, that's certainly there. So I, I think of a really good idea 
a really good song, you know, comes along, it, it would be hard to say no to that. But, yeah. you know, here again, anything's possible. That's amazing. And you guys have such a growing fan base, not only here in the U.S., but across the world. What are the chances that we could see maybe a, a European tour or a European lag of the TSO tour? Um, well, it would be difficult. I, I think it would be the matter of we would have to have another band to do that. Yeah. Um, we have all we can do right now between TSO East and TSO West to cover ground here in America. Right. In North America. So to take on a task like that would be pretty significant. I mean, you would have to really, you'd have to put a whole other group of musicians together, a group of vocalists, and not to mention the expense of putting on this show. And, you know, the show is the show. Paul O'Neill was, was very, very adamant about, you know, we're not going to cut corners. And that means that the show is is very involved, it's very expensive, and it is hard to move around. So we would love to be able to do that, trust me. But I think logistically, it's there's a lot of factors involved that, uh, that make it difficult. But hey, you know what? Throughout Europe and throughout the world, people know the trans and Orchestra. They're fans of the music. Uh, the band Sabotage kind of laid the groundwork for that mm-hmm. in, in a lot of areas. But... You know, we would hope to get back over there sometime with TSO and and do some more shows. All right. We'll keep our eyes and our ears open. (laughs) Jeff, thanks so much for your time. Tickets on sale right now at rock92.com. The show is December 11th at the Greensboro Coliseum. Like I said, we're putting in good words. Hopefully the weather will pan out this year. Again, (laughs) we've been talking with Jeff Plate from the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Jeff, I really appreciate your time this morning, man. You bet. Take care.